Hey guys and girls, how's it going? Hope you guys having a great week. So I'm back today with another video. It is that time of the month, guys. So it's time to talk about the top five games coming out in October 2019. Before I jump straight in and introduce some of the games that look interesting this month, I just want to apologize, obviously, for not being around for the last couple of weeks. Um, basically, I got really, really sick to the point of I actually lost my voice um, and it pretty much KO'd me. So I wasn't, I didn't have the energy to really to do anything. Thing, record, write, um, and or anything to do with my channel. So um, I've pretty much just been recovering. I'm not fully recovered. My voice is still a little bit sharp, but I wanted to record this today. So let's jump straight in on this video today, guys. So let's talk about the top five games coming out in October 2019. I'm just going to cover five main titles, which for me looked interesting. This isn't an exhaustive list. This is just a list of games that I think look cool this month that I wanted to talk about. And there's going to be a couple of honorable mentions at the end of this video too. So let's start us off. First coming out this month is Concrete Genie. Um, which is set for release on the 9th of October and it will be available exclusively on the PlayStation 4. This is developed by a small indie studio called Pixel Opus. It's an action adventure single player game and I love the look of this game. I love the art style. I think it looks really, really interesting and I've pretty much been interested in this game really since we first found out about it. The basic plot of the game, um, it's set in a small town called Denska and you actually play a young boy by the name of Ash, who obviously is a budding artist and regularly doodles in his notebook. Suffice it to say, a group of bullies basically steal his book and rip out the pages and all his doodles in his notebook and scatter these throughout the city. And your purpose throughout the game is basically to recover these pages. Um, along the way, Ash actually discovers a magical paintbrush that can actually bring his creations to life. And your ultimate goal is to kind of avoid these bullies, undo all the damage that they cause um, and try to bring some life and colour back into his hometown. Um, it looks really, really good. It looks like an interesting indie title that you can just sort of jump in and play over one or two sessions. And I'm all for that, especially with some of the bigger RPGs that I've been playing recently. Um, but this game, according to project manager Brent um, Gok, you can actually finish this game in five to six hours. Um, it is available from release on the 9th for $24.99. I don't know whether that's a little steep for the size of the game or how long it takes you to complete it. Um, I am going to be picking this game up and I am going to be playing it and I am actually planning to live stream a bit of it on Wednesday night at 8pm um, British Standard Time. So if you would be interested to check it out then please join my Twitch channel. Um, I'll put a link in the description below and join me on Wednesday to check out the game. The second game coming out is on the 25th of October. This is another PlayStation 4 exclusive and this is Medieval. This is another indie title that's going to be coming to the console in October and it's developed by Other Ocean Emeryville. It's an action adventure hack and slash. Basically, this is a remake of the 1998 PlayStation game Medieval. I didn't own an, a PlayStation when it first came out, so I kind of missed this game, um, but it looks kind of fun and it looks quirky and it looks, you know, just real simple and fun uh, kind of platforming hack and slash. You basically play as Sir Daniel Fortes this he is an inept and long dead knight who is accidentally resurrected by the evil sorcerer Zarok. Um 100 years after his embarrassing demise, uh, the kingdom of Galomir is under a threat from Zarok's demon hordes and you are effectively play as this character to fight these hordes and uh, undo the uh, curse and, and stop the sorcerer and so on. It just looks simple and fun. Um, we are told it is a faithful recreation of the original. It will have the same level designs and layouts throughout, but obviously see it's updated for uh, you know to include more modern graphics better camera systems um, there was a demo available on the PSM um, but strangely enough this was a timed 
time limit um, and it actually expired yesterday which is really really weird because I wanted to check it out and actually play it but I didn't get a chance to play it obviously with me being ill which makes me a little sad but this is a game that looks fun um, I think PlayStation you know have had some really really good remakes of classics obviously we had the Crash Bandicoot Insane, Insane Trilogy Spyro uh, Reignited Trilogy was absolutely fantastic Ratchet and Clank was a really really good remake as well so if medieval is on the similar quality to those games then you can expect a pretty good uh, indie hack and slash platforming game and it should be a lot of fun to play the third game and this is probably my most anticipated game of october is the outer worlds which is due for release on the 25th of october this will be available on the PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It is a sci-fi RPG by Obsidian Entertainment and it looks absolutely amazing. Um, it is set in an alternative future where mega corporations have begun terraforming and colonizing alien planets. Uh, you start off on a colony ship and something goes horribly wrong. The faster than light travel goes astray, uh, leaving your colony ship and you effectively lost and abandoned at the edge of colony space. You basically wake up from cryo sleep um, uh, to find that most of the passengers are in hibernation. And throughout the game, you're pretty much um, exploring these different colonies. Um, exploring sort of the different corporations that have expanded into these areas and really learning about the different factions and different characters and NPCs that you meet along the way. Um, this is the Fallout game that people wanted. So if you're really into your sci-fi, if you love your Fallout titles, um, I think this will be right up your street. Um, it's got branching story paths, it's got definite player choices and the gameplay looks really fun too and this is a first person shooter it will have a full character creation and customization there are going to be well fleshed out npc characters you will have companions that can join you along the way um, and they will aid you in combat as well as on personal missions um, which you'll have to carry out for them kind of like loyalty missions i think you can have two companions with you at any time you have some pretty cool abilities. So you have tactical di time dilation. This allows you to slow down time. It reveals enemy health, tactical advantages, weaknesses, weak points. There is a whole array of weapons and uh, gadgets and things that you can at your disposal, including a very, very cool shrink ray, which looks awesome. There is element in the game. There are, you know, social leveling that you can, so you can increase your character to make them more charismatic, to give you more options in terms of dialogue choices so you can talk your way through um you know objectives and through puzzles and there will be a tech side of things as well and there's also a really interesting system called the floor system so if you repeatedly fail at something or die in a certain way uh, then you will actually develop a a, a floor you will get a debuff uh, which makes you weak to that but it, it also gives you extra perks as compensation for this so if you constantly get killed by spiders or something like that then you maybe have a terrible fear of spiders or if you keep getting burned you might have a fear of fire um, or if you keep falling off of cliffs then you have a fear of heights the outer worlds looks absolutely fantastic it is a game I'm definitely gonna be picking up this month um, I have pre-ordered it uh, I don't pre-order many games but the outer worlds is one that I'm pretty confident is gonna hopefully be good and uh, won't be a disappointment the fourth game coming out on my list this month, and I'm really interested um, and surprised that this is on here, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which is set for release on the 25th of October. Um, of course, this is going to be available across platform on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. It's by Infinity Ward, and of course, it's published by Activision. We get a Call of Duty every year. Call of Duty is not really a franchise that I'm massively interested in, um, but up until a couple of weeks ago, it, it was a game that kind of piqued my interest because there was a lot of really positive press around it. 
And a lot of the information that we were getting told about the game sound really positive. There was going to be a return to a story campaign, um, which obviously, you know, Activision had let go on the last Call of Duty and they focused more on the Battle Royale. So it was great to see a single player story campaign. Um, it was going to be kind of like a soft reboot of the Call of Duty series, focusing much more on realism and tactical based uh, moral choices. So um, players would have to make certain key decisions during missions and uh, you would actually get scored at the end of each level based on your performance so if there was any collateral damage or civilian casualties so if you saw a civilian maybe reaching for something and it looked like they might be reaching for a gun you could choose whether or not to take that civilian out and your choices would have definite consequences um you know to what happens in the story but also to you know how you're reviewed and how you're scored at the end of each mission uh, you can also there is different character dialogue which differs depending on choices the player makes in the game um, and there were going to be more sort of open were open sort of um options some more tactical choices that you'd have to make you know whether you use a sniper rifle use night vision goggles uh, explored the map a little bit more um it just sounded really interesting and something really different and really new uh, to tap that off there was going to be no season pass with free content um free drops of post con post game release content uh, which sounded great there was two new modes that sounded really interesting in terms of multiplayer there was ground war which promised over 100 players this is more like you know battlefield um and it sounded really, really fun. And a lot of the people that played the beta had a blast with that game mode. And I heard a lot of really positive things about it. And then you also had Gunfight, which is 2v2. Uh, there was going to be a huge amount of weapon customization as well, with up to 60 attachments. It all sounded really, really positive. And it sounded like Activision and Infinity Ward had finally been listening to uh, player feedback. And it just sounded really great. But then about a week ago, two weeks ago some more news dropped which kind of uh, some controversy hit um, mostly around two main elements obviously the PlayStation 4 um, was going to have a timed exclusive uh, mode called survival mode which is one of the multiplayer special ops mode um, and this was actually going to be exclusive until October 2020 so a full year to get an exclusive game mode obviously that pissed a lot of people off understandably and we've also found out some leaked information about the possibility of loot boxes microtransactions and horrifyingly pay to win mechanics so the first half of it sounds really interesting and it sounded like a game I really want to check out but I've got to say after the recent sort of news I'm holding off on this and I think you should definitely hold on to it too and wait and see what people say about it but I put it on this list because obviously it is was is one of the biggest releases coming out in October and if you're a first person shooter fan and you're a Call of Duty fan then I'm sure it's going to be on your list and the fifth and final game coming out this month in October is Luigi's Mansion 3 this is set for release on the 31st of October, of course, Halloween, and is going to be available exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. It is developed by Next Level Games, and it is the sequel to Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. And it looks cute, it looks amazing, and I am really, really excited. I actually didn't get to play any of the original Luigi's Mansion games, but Dante tells me that they're a lot of fun. Um, of course, you play as Luigi in this game, which I love. Um, um, basically, the premise of it is Luigi, his pet, Polter Pup, Mario, Peach, and a group of toads go on vacation together after receiving an invite to the Last Resort Hotel. Um, unfortunately, this is a trap set by King Boo, um, who is basically set out to capture Mario and his friends. Uh, it is left to Luigi with the help of Professor E. Gad, <laughs> with uh, his new creation, Gooigi, Polter Pup, and obviously his new Poltergust G00 or Goo, uh, to rescue Mario and his friends. And it looks really, really awesome. Um, the graphics look beautiful, the level design looks 
great. Um, you're basically set in a hotel and you have to explore this hotel and you have to deal with the many, many ghosts, including some really fun looking bosses uh, in search for missing elevator buttons. Uh, by gaining these elevator buttons, you then gain access to the 17 floors as you work your way up to the top of the hotel. Each floor is actually going to be based around different themes and it just looks great. The gameplay looks fantastic. Guiji um, looks really interesting. Um, it, obviously you've got the option for, for co-op there um, but it looks really good and it looks like they're inc incorporating quite heavily into some puzzle solving um, there's some great new moves with the um, poltergust goo uh, a new slam move which looks awesome and of course it promises multiplayer as well with the multiplayer scare scraper mode which has up to eight player local or online co-op uh, gameplay and it just looks great Luigi's Mansion 3 is definitely a game I'm really looking forward to picking up and if you own a Nintendo Switch then I would say it's probably a definite must buy for you in October uh, this this month in October 2019 so those are my top five games um, of course there are plenty of other releases coming out this month so here are a couple of honorable mentions for you guys to check out if you're interested All right, so there you have it. There are just some of the titles coming out in October 2019. Let me know what you guys think of these titles in the comment section below. What are you looking forward to playing this month? Which games are you definitely going to be picking up and checking out? Um, and why are you excited to play them? What are you looking forward to in October 2019? Please let me know in the comment section below your thoughts. Anyway, thank you guys so much again for your patience, for continuing to support the channel. It's massively appreciated. Of course, with my energy, levels being low a little bit at the moment it's going to take me a little bit of time to get my energy back to get to full health again and obviously um, back at full speed to start bringing out more videos and more content to you guys um, in the upcoming week so please just bear with me and uh, you know while I get over this really nasty cold that I have at the moment but yeah anyway hope you guys are having a great week take care and as always guys happy gaming bye guys